All right, guys, I see what you're seeing too, but let me just educate you real quick. There's no form of currency more valuable to women than attention. And attention can translate into money. It can translate into a great life. It can translate into great, valuable sexual energy. And it can translate into essentially hitting the lottery. So when you see young women and women in general doing this into the public and on Instagram, TikTok, and all of these apps, just understand. Some girl's going to be like, I'm special. I know my worth, right? She's going to say all that shit, right? And then you're going to take her out. It's going to be a dud. She's going to lay there on bed like a damn Carl's Jr. star, yeah. like a dead fish. And you're like, that ain't nothing, right? Yeah. So we have this idea that women are special and they 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 right. increase in value over time. You know what I mean? And she you know, Meaning, like, I know my worth. So she raises the value. Oh. She raises the price as she get older. Get older. This video will actually go over a story from a woman who describes herself as a former feminist who regrets not marrying and having a family. When she was in her early 20s, she had a great guy. They'd have been together for a while. They were thinking about getting married and having children. And then she got caught up in the feminist movement and decided she didn't want to do that. She wants to pursue a career and also go out and explore herself erotically, which we all know what that entails. And her boyfriend begs her not to do it because he loves her and wants to spend the rest of his life with her. But she doesn't listen and goes off. A month later, the buff calls and asks her to please save herself for him, because if she doesn't, their relationship will be over. But then she meets a guy, hooks up with him, doesn't like him, and immediately wants to go back to her boyfriend. But guess what? Her boyfriend kept his promise, he didn't take her back, and her life has been ruined as a result. Let's start with the cold hard facts. The feminist movement, or what I call the Fumen movement, is no longer about equal rights. It is about emasculating men and encouraging women in their 20s to explore their sexuality and climb the corporate ladder. As a result, many of these women have had pleasure with lots of men, the majority of whom are either bad boys or high-value older men who are only interested in hooking up. After being pumped and dumped repeatedly, they set their sights on the proverbial nice guys, guys who have their shit together. These same guys seem shit when women rode the carousel, or these guys were treated very poorly as was the case with this woman and her boyfriend. However, nice guys are waking up, thanks to various male movements, and are outright rejecting these high mileage women. This is resulting in a surplus of single older women, who live alone and are unhappy and bitter about their lives. They have devoted their lives to their careers, and they may volunteer and do other things, but they are very empty on the inside. These women frequently regret their choices, and many of them turn to alcohol or other substances to drown their sorrow. Let me tell you another story. I'm 45 years old, a former ardent feminist, and I'm thoroughly dissatisfied with my life. Never married, single woman with two cats and a dog, successful career and wonderful support from parents and siblings. I am truly blessed, but I am miserable on the inside. I met Doug, a man who would be the true love of my life. He was a beautiful man and a fantastic lover. He's the kind of guy every girl wants to find and marry. I had him but let him go to pursue myself, and in my final semester of college, I had classes with two progressive feminist instructors who greatly influenced my thinking. They'd encouraged me and other women not to get bogged down with a man and instead to explore ourselves from a career and relationship standpoint. I was skeptical at first, but after my best friends became ardent feminists, I began to believe them. It was the worst mistake I'd ever made. I can still see the look of shock and disbelief on his face as his eyes welled up with tears. He begged me not to end our relationship, but I told him I had to in my twisted brain. After screwing it all up, I began drinking at night to relieve my pain. And this is where her substance abuse, alcohol abuse begins. It began with one glass of wine, then two, three, and finally a whole bottle. Some nights, I went out to happy hour and start drinking there. This is also where I began my promiscuous phase. I was truly in a downward spiral after that. My personal life had been a complete disaster since I broke up with Doug. Aside from my career and my wonderful family, I've had 37 physical relationships with men, the turning point in my life occurred a year and a half ago when I was diagnosed with hap human pampiloma virus, which I obviously acquired from one of my potential partners and is now affecting both my genital and oral cavities. Of course, I've stopped having intercourse and committed to getting my life back on track. All of my former feminist friends now have husbands and families. So she was the only one who became involved in the feminist movement and stuck with it and look where she is now. So once again, there are many lessons to be learned and even though this story is told from the perspective of a woman, 
it just goes to show what these movements do to the minds of these women. Every one of them ends up unhappy and alone in the end. Don't forget to hit the like button to help spread the word about this video. Thank you for taking your daily dose of red pills, and remember that a red pill a day keeps bad poker hands away. So have a good rest of your day and cheers.